Okay, so I uh, before you all got here, I went over the setting with Richard. Uh, is everybody able to move their tokens? Where's Dan? Can... Oh, hey, Dan. Hi there. Sorry. It's all right. You're three minutes late. I know, I know. I had to, I tried to clean up the ferret cage fast. How dare you? The ferret cage? The ferret cage? <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> Hold on, wait. What? <laughs> no, I get it. That's what they all say. Right. <laughs> I had an ex-girlfriend that had ferrets. Um, uh, yeah, so, all right. Your all's tokens work pretty good. You can move them around and stuff. Uh, yeah. All right. Yep. Here we go. So, uh, it is the 25th of Owl of Adventure Tide. It is, uh, Tuesday, and uh, you are at the Bristleback Inn in Zelcor's Ferry. I forgot to mention, uh, also, I know that there's lag on Roll20. Uh, that's because of the dynamic lighting. So, um, the biggest thing is, like, just tell me what you want to do and where you want to go if it becomes a problem. Or, you know, if, if, if I don't move the token and it's laggy, just say, hey, can you move my token or whatever. Because um, we'll just use it as a tabletop more so than a, you know, whatever. Um, and I have another computer that doesn't have that issue, um, and I can I can span around really quickly and I can move things. So, okay. And okay. Um, in Zelcor's Ferry, uh, first of all, uh, it has been a very hot summer in East Reach and dry. And that uh, hot, dry season continues. The banks of the nearby river are actually beginning to recede, and water courses uh, along the peninsula are drying up. Um, Ooh. And uh, in Zilcourse Ferry, you have the Bristleback Inn, where you're currently at, and have been staying since you came into town, has become almost like a, a new home to you. It costs one gold piece per day to live there. Uh, so if you haven't, you need to subtract seven gold pieces or let me know if you can't. And I will uh, will roll to see how you did in the stables. Uh, and then there's the stables, uh, a smith, a uh, guard barracks, a trading post, a strange person that lives out on the water in a shack. The ferry itself that brings in trade and money to the settlement. And a gym cutter. And a recent addition is a vertical tower style way shrine with a, uh, a symbol of the, um, the symbol of the light uh, set atop it overlooking makeshift graves. And uh, I'll also describe the people that you see here. Um, your comrades, uh, perhaps to cover other more ground, um, have split apart from you and they've been exploring the wilderness. Uh, and they've been gone. Um, and they have since returned and there are currently three seven different people here in the tavern that are guests tonight other than Odo Bristleback there are two um, and you, you, you've noticed that this 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 happens a lot that there are people that come through you might call them transient people uh, there is something happening where people come from the east and southeast and they're trying to get on this ferry and get out of town Two such people are sitting here together. Two men. Um, there is a woman sitting by herself. And four people drinking and singing loudly together. All with armor on and weapons and backpacks. Mm. It sounds like they are in the same line of work as we. Possibly, or maybe guards for these people or something. 
flying and just nods. <clears throat> uh, well, what's the... Looks across the table at everybody. Um, so what are we What are we thinking? Are we going to head out to the... Last time, last week, there was a... When we left the... So we, maybe we've shared this with everybody, but uh, like that ogre, that, that ogre and those kobolds, I mean, uh, what do you think? Are we going to risk going back into the mouth of doom or are we going to deal with that, try to see what we can do with that ogre? I think we're going to do more of uh, like uh, surveying the landscape and the lands, I think. Isn't that what maybe we we're going to try to do, see if there was anything else we could find out there? I, I'm trying to remember. My thought was uh, to try to find out... Um, what's more things in the surrounding area and hopefully maybe get exactly. some idea of the of where the ogre is and stuff like that so we have an idea how much time it takes him to get there is that going to be easy normal and what were you saying there Ken? i was gonna say there uh the river seems to be lower now uh there was a place where we could forge it i wonder if uh going to look here on the other side yeah i think the ford yeah, is a good place good. to start might be where the knolls are. Well, anything we learn about surrounding groups might be useful to know, especially if part of our plan eventually involves, you know, helping each of them winnow each other out. Right, right. Well, what, do you think about the, what do you think about those fellows over there? Yeah, maybe um, we should chat some of these people up a little bit. Maybe they know a little bit about the area that yeah. they've come through. If they have similar interests, it might be productive to join forces for a time. That's right. We, maybe one of them can help us out, come with us or something, or a couple of them. Absolutely. I'm not much of one for business talk. Maybe I'll go chat those, chat up those other two uh, rough-looking ones. They just, yeah, just I'm, I'm, not too personal, I'm not too personal myself, so I should probably like not try to do uh, uh, talking with people. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a grumpy hey, grump. Caden just smells really bad. Too. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mean to be, but I'll stum I'm pretty sure I'll stumble my own, stumble over my own words and possibly come across the wrong way, even though I don't mean to. We're missing good old um, yeah, Bell. Uh, what's his oh. name? Folger. Folger. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a a question, uh, Ross. Which unfortunately, I in the intervening week, I did not find the uh, sheet where I wrote the. Uh, the uh the rumor about the f the furs that i mentioned to people at the time when it was fresh in my mind uh is that person who told me about it is that person uh a tracker as well as a, a trapper i imagine if he's a trapper he's probably a tracker you've heard Maybe a it might be something we can ask him you heard a rumor about furs yeah, it was like, uh, and something about red, I think it was one of them or something. But either case, it was a boar or bear or something that, you know, they pay extra money for special something. I I, I know I didn't lose it, lose it, but unfortunately, this is my office desk also. Um, <laughs> if that's the, the case, you have, in the time you came here a couple of weeks ago, speaking with Odo Bristleback, you were able to talk to him and kind of befriend him. And he confided in you that uh, he buys pelts. Um, oh, okay. That's that, what I remember, uh, buying pelts. That he's able to trade up. And if you bring <clears throat> in bear or panther skin, so we'll give you 50 gold pieces. Uh, a wolf pelt is 20 gold pieces. And if you bring back a whole bear, uh, apart from its skin, its meat is also worth 10 gold pieces. Oh, wow. And then wow. weirdly... He mentions that he's absolutely not interested in wild boars at all. That's right. Yes. I remember commenting on that. No wild boars. No wild boars, eh? Yeah, we could eat them. We could chop them up and eat them. They might be a little tough, but good fire. Barbarian would be up for that. So <laughs> I, I, um, one of the things I'd like to do is uh, ask him... You know, during the time that we're here, just in general, do they have any, does he know of any people that go out to the woods tracking it or anything like that in a general purpose? I know it's dangerous, so there may not be people who go out there. That's why he's offering money. But wondering if anybody he knows goes out there as a general purpose, maybe we can get a, uh, a guide or at least buy information. 
You go to Odo Bristleback and ask him that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, aye, there were people that went out uh, just to, to go a hunt and uh, they actually made quite a bit of money, but they found something strange out there. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you tell. What, what did I, uh, they find? A group of people traveled west of here uh, about some 20 miles and found a, a giant red bear and slew it and dragged it back. Cut up all of its pelts into pieces and its meat. Uh, probably made several hundred gold off of the deal. Wow. Good for them. But I uh, never heard of a creature like that before in my life. I doubt there's a, another one like it. Uh, uh, there are animals. Uh, there's a lake out west of here. Sometimes animals gather around the lake, uh, deer and such. But um, uh, in the dry season, I, I would say they maybe have migrated off from the peninsula. Has anybody reported, besides the bandits, any um, any bandits or, or creatures that are are hunting in groups in the woods nearby here or within a day or less travel? I, well, uh, I know one group, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, I believe it, uh, uh, your friend Folger told me that you all uh, ran into an entire army of little dogmen and... Yes, and, uh, <clears throat> right, yes. There are, there are, uh, Groups of people like that out in the wilderness, uh, um, sometimes bandit fortresses. Um, uh, do they? Uh, do does anybody know that it's in a specific direction or anything like that, or just too vague because you don't get close enough to find out? Not that I know of. Uh, uh, to tell you the truth, <laughs> you're uh, one of the first group of long-term tenants I've had in a long time. Yeah, we're lucky we made it back that last time. We did lose one person. Oh no, I I haven't heard uh, the name Bristleback before. Uh, where 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 do you come from? Where I was, there's no Bristlebacks. It's a, it's a unique name. Well, it is a unique name. I. Uh, it's a strange place to make your living in the world, isn't it? Zalcourt's Ferry. Place is named after the. Famous mage, of course, that uh, stood in battle in ancient times against the lords of chaos here in this site. Um, so the land, as part of it, was called Zelkor uh, at the time, and so we called it Zelkor's Ferry. Um, but uh, it's a, it was a way that I could be an, a landowner. And I have no children. Uh, my wife and I do not. So it's a it's a strange name for a strange man to make a strange living. <laughs> uh, we are indebted to your hospitality. Why don't we go back I to the, the tavern and check those people out? Maybe start talking them up a little bit. Sure, sure. Wanigan, well, uh, just uh, as as I'll, I'll go with you. Is Matt? Is your character's name Dolanite? No, no, no. Is, it's uh, let me change that. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. What is it? It is um Jor. That's how do you spell that? Jor. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, so as we're heading back to talk to 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 uh, one of these tables, planning and just says, I just got to thinking. Uh, Odo doesn't like hunting. Doesn't like boar. Doesn't want to see any good boar. Last name Bristleback. I I heard rumors about creatures that. Like wolves that turn, turn to people that turn to wolves in the full moon and things like this. You don't think Odo's? Uh, oh, it's a bit of a stretch. An accusation, Levy. Uh, keep that to yeah. yourself. Yeah, Ooh, a lot of people would, as I uh, said, pendant on his hospitality. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, just don't. Yeah, let's keep that to ourselves. I just got to thinking. That's all. I mean, when was the last full moon? He just scratches himself behind his ear and smells it <laughs> smells the whatever's back there i think was the last than, full moon uh you can make a uh d6 listen at door check if you're discussing this with the party okay so that we're whispering and not being heard uh so to or, see if like because you're like thinking you're talking about this 
and you're thinking yeah. about like, oh, when's the last full moon and stuff, um, to see if you notice something. Oh God! Okay, yeah. well, I roll a three. Should we all roll d six? No, no. I'm just thinking him because he brought this back and he was like talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Um, no, you do not notice something. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what, Richard. What's your character's name? Is it Gerald? Gerald Faria. I've added it to uh, the little. I cool, see yeah. Subtitle yeah, thing. You're, you're, um, yeah. You're right. I mean, I get thinking these silly ideas, and I just should. I just should keep it to myself. I, uh, this is, you're right. He's an incredible. He's a he's a good host and everything else. So, you forget I even said it. Well, I'm just saying maybe you know we got to be careful what we say. But I think that's a good thought. As crazy as it might be, it's it's good to be aware of it. Who else would start if Well, uh, I'll keep that to myself. Um, and, and I just I start walking over to the two that are the two transients. What do you I'll, want? We'll join him. Uh, I just, just thought I've been here for a few weeks now and, um, folks like yourself keep coming up from the South and East moving through. And it's like, is there a war happening or something down there? What's going on? Coast Road's not a safe place, sir. I wouldn't go there if I were you. Well, well what's been what, what's happened? Are you did you used to live there and you had to you had to move out or? We thought we'd open up trade further north into East Reach. People said we were crazy. We were. Is this? Are you talking about the uh, folks to the? On the road to the to the east, we heard that there's. Uh, well, again, I talk too much, but uh, w what I heard is there's scores of uh, ne'er do wells at the on the coast road. Is that is that what is that kind of what you're getting at? I, I'm getting at it. There's out in those forests are whole bands of people, desperate people, insane people. Some say, I didn't see it, but some say that not people at all. And they they prey on anyone that starts to f find their way north for any reason at all. Foresters and patrols and merchants. And, uh, I've heard of such rumors before. Skeptical. Have you seen anything? Or only rumors. It's true. My friend and I here, we, we've we barely made it out uh, out of the forest here to Zellcourse Ferry. We're going to find work locally, earn a gold piece, and we're going to get on this ferry and get out of here. Better to starve in the streets of Bardsgate than to, than to be in this wilderness. This place is accursed. If I were you, I would leave too. And well, you're you're doing a good job convincing me, but uh, yeah, I I used to have a little farm, and uh, well, I just everything went to went to went to pot. But long story, not very exciting. I, I think I'm going to stick around, but it's sorry to hear you you didn't have didn't have any good luck, and he just gets up. I'll yeah. pay you a half silver to tell me more about what you saw. Make it a gold piece, and I'll give you a name. Ooh. A gold piece is enough to get on the ferry and get out. His partner, when he says this, looks at him like this. <laughs> yeah, we didn't couldn't get a name off them last time. It's a different one, right? Don't know. Yeah, it's a different group. Um, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't get a name off the last group, I mean. On your honor as a lawful, f as, on your honor, on, sorry, on your honor as a fellow traveler under the law, do you attest that what I offer you is worth this? That what you offer me is worth this coin? Sir, if you're gonna invoke the law, the truth is that 
Knowing that name will just bring you closer to death. But I'll give it to you if you give me that coin. If it's able to bring me closer to death, then perhaps it will bring me closer to the purpose that brought me here. Give him the gold coin. Ooh, badass. Okay. Um, I didn't come here for sensible reasons. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The whole big enemy is dead. Yeah. Um... Um, I'm actually interested to see. Oh, <laughs> no. He, uh, leans forward. And, um, he says, I wasn't, uh, gonna say it, but, uh, it wasn't just something I've heard. There are things out there. They're not people. It's something else. Dayrog. Dayrog. That was the name. And there are a lot of them. Um, oh. Get the name again? Dayrog. 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 Let's see if I can find... I'm not a scholar. I'm a man at arms by trade. His name means nothing to me. This, can you describe them? You say that we're not people, but there are many things in this world that are not people. How close? Uh, in which ways did they uh, diverge? Let's see here. Um, they live in the hills east of the coast road near that accursed dungeon, Rapanothic. And, uh, Maybe that's the name of the creatures that we saw. They they hunt and they fight among those hills. Um, and I will get you... You I'm asked, to, asked him what they look like? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'm starting to feel like uh, when I got here a few weeks ago, I thought, wow, this is exciting. Look at the little beautiful little palisades and all this, and the more I talk to people and figure out what's going on, the more I feel like I'm in a prison. Mm -hmm. that just closing in on prison. We yeah. have to do something to. We, you know, I'm starting to feel like this is uh, uh, a place I've been long enough to care about where it's heading, and I think it's heading in the wrong direction. I feel like it might collapse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They had the shape of men, except they were larger. Their faces, they looked like men, except when, <coughs> in the glimpses of torchlight, I could see it looked as, as if they, it looked like creatures I've heard about in stories. Men with large noses and large cheeks and teeth that are like fangs. The skin was... This ruddy and off, wrong color, it was a different... It wasn't like the skin of a man, it, had had, it was like a hide. Uh, but they were larger than men, but they were armed like them. Armor, weapons. And they traveled in large groups, or small bands, or what was it? Yes. Yes, both. Did they speak as men? No, just the noise. Just what we could hear. And I could tell it was his name, the master of them, Dayrog. Oh. So east of uh, the coast road in the hills. Hmm. Okay. When we're done with these people, I have questions for the, the group that may have interacted last week. With the four adventure folks? Yeah, the people who were there on uh, who would, went scouting on Wednesday. Uh, well, I wanted to get a, a rough idea of the locations we hit. Um, Gerald, do you give him the gold, the gold piece? The man who told you that? Can you hear me? Am I muted? 
I can hear you. Uh, Richard, uh, did, did you give him the gold piece? Yeah, he did. I did, yes. Oh, okay. Um, he takes I've, the gold piece. I've been piece, doing all kinds of like... And and he gets up and just walks away immediately. And he leaves his, he leaves his companion there. Okay. The other man just looks shocked. He was in a hurry. Your companion. I, well, it seems to be a companion of convenience. I look discerningly at this guy to see how he's he, what he's uh, equipped with wearing and how he's carrying himself in the face of what he just heard. He looks... Uh, he looks... cagey, insane, and uh, like he might just... Exp- like he might just like lose it at any second um and um and he says like you would be any better like any of you would be any better everyone has to do what they have to do in this world that's fair in the end we must all be our own advocate for our own interests ah he gets up and he storms off too wait oh i'd like you wish work (laughs) Yeah, he just like he gets up and he just walks straight out of the end and leaves. Yeah, fair. I think he looked a little close to uh, breaking. I'm not sure. That man needs a nap. <laughs> this woman, this woman that's by herself. What does she look like? Um, thin and short and mousy. And she's just she's not wearing armor or anything. Just... Nope. Why don't you go up and uh, see what yeah. she's about? We don't want to all crowd her because that might be uh, off-putting. Yeah, right. Caden will go speak to her. The... He's going to have his holy symbol out. She looks at the holy symbol and she's like, I don't have alms, holy man. Leave me alone. Well, mm-hmm. No, I, I, perhaps I have a uh, point for you if you uh, can answer some questions. She turns away from you. The reaction rolls are on fire tonight. Oh. <laughs> Is that right? He yeah. just walks back to the group like, well, that didn't work. Yeah, not everybody's friendly. I think that Flanagan has already gone over to the group of four that are drinking. <laughs> um, and uh, he uh, he uh, he, sta- he doesn't sit down with him. He sort of stands there and he says, uh, howdy, the fellows. Uh, you look like the kind that are... Uh, Getting ready to go out into the into the wilderness, are you? Maybe one of we them, could trade some information or something. One of them straight up puts a, a a boot up onto a chair, and Captain Morgan's as he and starts to drink, and he's like, "Hi, I'm Sirik, and these are my companions, Nason, Cal, and Connell, and we're here to slay and destroy and crush chaos." Ooh, wow, that's good. Hey, those names again. Uh, Cirque, Neeson, Call, and Connell. You got they had a lot of confidence. Just, just coming right out to your pores. Are you, uh, you, you've been here for a while or did you, you just, you just came in, right? We just came in. We've heard about the troubles in this place and how mighty heroes are standing against the dark here at the edge of the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that we are. Um, you seem like the type that, uh, yeah, you're the hero type for sure. He, I look them up and down. Do they have, uh, are, they, are they, do they look um, like, the, are they experienced? Are they scarred and well-worn armor and weapons and this kind of thing? So or either dandy king. like. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, so when you look at Sirik, the one who's talking, dandy like is a great description. And no, his equipment it. has not been used. Um, okay. Two of them. You do good role playing there, Ross. I I got dandy (laughs) from that. There, two of them are, um, including Sirik, have think they're they're wearing tabards and um, chain, and uh, Sirik, even though he's in a tavern, has his chain up over his head, Um, and um, but the 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 other two um, look nothing like them. One of them is this huge man. Uh, I would compare him to maybe like the Hound from Game of Thrones, like this really big guy 
in a leather, um, you know, armor and uh, with weapons and stuff. And the other person is in a, uh, a cloak um, and uh, looks much more unassuming and slightly older. Well, um, we, uh, we're gonna, uh, it might not, might not hurt for us to, uh, maybe go out together if you're leaving tomorrow. We're gonna be scouting her out, out, out in the wilderness, um, and the more, the more the better. I'll tell you one thing, I mean, I, I, I stand behind you, I, I have full no doubt you're going to, uh, conquer the, the, conquer the forces of chaos, but, uh, I've been here for four weeks and I've seen, mm, eight or nine people die. Um, I was the last of my first, the first group, much like you that went out there. Um, it doesn't hurt to get a little information, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, band together, um, you know, run away from some dog man and, uh, one of you gets shot in the back with an arrow. And if, it, if there's eight of us, then there's a chance it's not you. You notice as you say this that the person that was looking down at his drink before is now you have his attention and he's listening. Uh, Sirik, on the other hand, is uh, he he says, yes, of course. Yes, we should band together and we should uh, uh, we should gather information. I, I agree as if you just he just ignored the whole thing you said about being here almost a month. And he, and he says, um, uh I, I have only a few conditions if you are to join our band. First of all, we must slay chaos on sight. It is what we are here to do. Secondly, um, we share any treasure that we find equally. I wish to uh, get uh, Flanagan's attention. Yeah. And I, I kind of like, like pull him off, pull move like off a little bit. Okay, I like, yeah. I like the idea of getting a bunch of more people, like you said, more targets, etc. And let's face it, the dandy uh, looks like he's going to make a fine... We, we don't have the paladin with us. He's going to make a fine attraction to things because he's going to blunder in and do stupid things. Uh, you know, that might that be fine. You can, blunder quite well. you can blunder and get away with it quite well. Yes, yes. So uh, that's good. The only thing I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about is... Uh, that uh, he may be a uh, blunder, like uh, attacking things that we have no hope whatsoever of fighting. Let's say we run across uh, these uh, cobalt. Uh, I ha I actually believe he might actually charge them. I'm okay with that. That means they'll jump him. I'm running. I'm just letting you know. I'm not joining in a fight against those kobolds until we've set up the fight on our ground, our choices. Yeah. yeah so you can be okay I, with that. If we, if we go with this guy, uh, he does something stupid like that. I'm not backing him. I think that's a sensible concern. I would propose that we present our knowledge of the kobold swarm that you know of to him as a gesture of good faith and see if he reacts to that in the, fashion conducive to our faith in him. Right. So let's... Uh, you don't think you might run away? Oh, run away would be fine. Um, because that's basically what we'd do if we weren't ready. <clears throat> in that's another situation, name. I'd be worried he runs away, but it's no worse than... No worse than if we didn't have him with us. I look at it that way. We're not, we didn't, we're not making our group with this guy as the cornerstone of our group, so we're okay with that, I think. Okay, let's... Okay. Uh, so Flanagan turns around and he says, uh, well, it sounds like uh, you, you have yourself a deal. Uh, so I'll just when you turn around, you just... the person in the robes, it's not sitting there. Yeah. Go ahead. Not sitting there. Mm -hmm. Gone. Yeah. Go All, right. All right. Um, the, uh, so what we, we've been uh, parlaying over the last week and of planning and such. And um, so there's a, last time we were out and about, we were, uh, came upon an, an ogre. We call him an ogre. I don't know if you ever seen such a thing. If he opened his mouth, he could probably fit your head inside it and bite your bite your head right off. Uh, and probably about, I don't know, two, three dozen, maybe more little little creatures all around him. Um, 
Well, we tricked him and survived, but uh, I think he's uh, maybe got it in for us and we got to find out where he lives, basically. So that's where we're headed tomorrow. And just wondering if you uh, got any plans on uh, how you might go about such a thing, since you're, you seem to be uh, have a way of the world. Have no fear, sir. And he puts his unnecessarily gauntleted hand on your shoulder and he says... <laughs> What, what was your name? Flanagan. Flanagan. Well, we will best this foe. Gall, trickery, cunning. We will overcome them. Have no fear. Like the cut of your jib. Ah, uh, okay. So Flanagan is, is a bit more of a talker. I look over at the, the big guy um, as I say this and I say, um, uh, and he gets a bit serious and he says, I'm not going to lie to you, fellow. If you, you go at that guy with that kind of attitude, you, your head's going to be torn right off. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I'm not going to be standing beside you if you go run at a creature like that. But you say that to we the can big go guy? Find where he lives. What's that? You say that to the big guy? I say it to the, the dandy, but I'm kind of glancing over to see oh. what, his, what he thinks of this. Yeah, the important one. An honorable death is a worthy death. Flanagan, we all die. Um, the big guy, uh, he uh, is silent. Well, uh, well, maybe we'll see you in the morning then, and uh, we'll find out. Uh, maybe you'll find yourself an honorable death. All right. That's been about 40 minutes in the inn now. Hey, oh, I sorry. didn't want to interrupt while it was being talking, but as soon as you said we turned around and didn't see that guy there, I wanted to look around, and if I saw any evidence of the door opening or anything like that, or if he's somewhere else in the room. Yeah, I was about to say uh, that as you all get up to leave, uh, uh, and you step out the door, you feel a sharp object suddenly pressed against your ribs in the dark. Wait, Who all of us simultaneously? No, sorry, just, uh, uh, just Alaric. And uh, and you hear a voice, and he says, "Now look, mate. Don't worry. I just wanted to show you what we can do. These two religious zealots—they hired us. There's a lot of money, but I'm not interested in dying either." That's so, very sensible. So if we work together, and something bad happens. You need to understand. That's where we're at on things. I understand uh, your intentions, and I appreciate the clarity of them. And you can rest assured that we intend on returning alive. And if that means avoiding something, we will avoid it. We are not going to go charging into things. The blade is gone, and, and he says, Seems like you got a good group. Um, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. Sarek and Neeson, they're good men. We're not going to be trying to hurt them or anything. But they'll do enough, uh... I think what you said is true. And so, you should just know that when we leave tomorrow. And then, uh, you hear, like, uh, some fabric just flap, and then he just turns around a corner and disappears into the dark. Very cool. useful. On that similar note, um, I ask Caden, uh, the person that kind of rebuffed you, the woman there, uh, did you get a chance to see anything about her when you tried to talk to her? Close her up. Uh, she, she just, uh, she's kind of mouthy, that's about all I can do. Okay, no, you couldn't fan. see anything about her, which, how she was dressed... Like, was she in uh, leathers, uh, regular tavern clothing, uh, merchant, anything about her that was noticeable? Was so I'm asking Caden, tavern, but I'm, I, uh, I didn't hear you right. describe it, Caden, no, so I figured fair, you know. yeah. Um And Caden, what you saw her wearing was a cloak uh, with traveler's tunic and belt and boots. Um, the sort of thing she... She was prepared for this journey. Uh, she's not like the other two that were sitting there and, you know, had barely clothes on their back. 
Yeah, she looks like she's ready for travel. Doesn't have a whole lot on her, though. See, I've okay. got my eye out for something we're missing. We're missing uh, those finger waggly types, and I was hoping that she might be one of them. She doesn't seem too fond of the religion, though. That is a problem based on our group. So, mayhap we uh, we see what happens, and maybe we can build our reputation. Hmm. Um, one thing I'd like to, before we, uh, if we're going to get into moving off for the day, is it okay for Flanagan to have purchased a pen, paper, and pen, and an ink? Yeah, I think the general uh, store would have that. Okay, cool. I just want to pretend he's the one who's doing this mapping that I'm doing. Yeah. Well, pretend. I mean, I, I, I want him to be mapping, whatever you want to call it. We're all learning to pretend. do that. That's a great, the great maps you've been making. Yeah. I actually bought a piece of parchment. You can have that too. Ooh. A piece of parchment? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, that's perfect. I don't even need paper then. I'll just do one map on one side and one on the other. I'll just, just it's going to diagram where we go. It's just for posterity when you wake up the next day uh it is now i will the 26th of adventure tide on woge's day and uh Sirik, neeson cole and connell are uh ready uh and uh prepared for a journey uh it's obvious that cole and connell are bearing the bulk of the weight of gear um and uh Sirik and neeson look like they're ready for a military parade with tabard and stuff like that on. They're they're wearing like they have shields and chainmail and sword, right? Like they have proper gear? Yes. Okay, good. Because that shit's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Um so what do, what do you think, Dan? What's the what do we all want to do here? Uh, we did talk oops, about the wrong name. We did talk about the uh Ford, which is to this directly to the south here but there's also the ogre stuff which is more directly east further out um are you talking about that rumor we just heard today is that uh, calling ogres no the the ogre that we saw last time met us at the um the gate to the mouth of doom right oh okay that's not east that's kind of like uh Sorry, west south, Did I say east west yeah you said yeah yeah um we, I heard there was a, a, a an encounter with with these uh, mosquito bats uh, somewhere. Uh, I don't want to go there because they've encountered them. Is there any area in that area that we could find wooded things nearby? Maybe we can start looking for other inhabitants nearby, and we can cross at the ford though. But it's on the other side of the ford that we'd be going. Right. So we can head for the ford and. And then at that point, uh, if anybody who was in that group could tell me which way they went when we get on the map, we'll go to one of the other areas. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Those mosquito things were like to the west, I think, right? Is that what they told us? Uh, yeah, wasn't it all to the west? I don't know if they didn't do the ford or anything, did they? Oops, do we lose? Well, we're here. How do you change your name? I forgot. Uh, uh, you want to go into the... Uh, sorry, that was kind of trailed off uses like I can find the thing. But you go into the upper left side where it shows of the Discord window where it shows the name of the server. Uh, if you right-click it, it should... No, not right-click it. If you click it, it should pull up the option to edit your server profile, a uh, third from the bottom. If you click that, you can change your name. Thank you. And other stuff locally. Yeah, because I, I, w I wasn't sure where that got changed. Thank you. I remember doing it. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. So do we want to... I guess if we're going to go across the ford, we're not going... We're, that's more to the south and east, which is not where the... South and west. South and west. Well, the, I, I know. I think the ford crosses directly south and east to the across this see this water right below us here 
on the map. Oh, that Ford. Oh, okay. Got it. I thought for yeah, some reason... Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, then that is a way, so maybe not the Ford. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess that's the question. I, I mean, I, I would vote that we... I like... What we talk so much. We talk so much about the ogre, um, and... I, I just think it seems like if we're going to be going into the dungeon, it's a it's a thing to we've got to sort out a little bit. So I, I feel like we should follow through on some of the conversations we had over the last week and yep. like go back to the dungeon entrance and maybe in track from there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, my I, my initial statement now actually made less sense than that. I was just thinking of going. Uh, west, not where you guys went before, in a different direction, in hopes of stumbling across. But yeah, it makes a lot more sense to go to the mouth first and see what we can feed, see there. Okay. okay. So let's head what, toward what the you, mouth. Do any among us have uh, wilderness tracking experience? Um, well, yeah. I uh, am a barbarian, but that doesn't mean... The light will guide us. All right. I mean, I, We're all about I, to I, get I, some wilderness tracking experience from the sounds of it. I used to lose cows, sheep and cows all the time and had to go find them. I mean, you didn't find them all the time, but... How hard can it be to track 30 men? Well, it's actually... Uh, should be, hopefully, not hard to track uh, 100 or so of these uh, small creatures, depending on what Wait, you said 100? Is. You said there were 30. Uh, Daryl's <laughs> like, obviously, like, wait, wait, what? There's how many? There, wasn't there something like... Five, six dozen? Uh, yeah, they're Cir at least a hundred. Cirque bellows into the morning area. This battle will be glorious. <laughs> no. In short. <laughs> and I look meaningfully at uh, Paul. I will be right behind you, Cirque. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the, the um, riverfront uh, has um, uh, receded here, but this is, a as you can see, very wide very deep river i mean uh, it's a, a very large body of water um and um apart from the river around you you can see a forested hillside and then an open floodplain moving into a delta and you do not have a boat that i'm aware of right so you look over yonder see where that where that little inlet comes in there Last week we said there's an old statue. We pulled it over with some rope, yeah. old dune or some such. And there was tracks all through the an old, old faint trail through the grass here. And I, uh, Flanagan will see if he can find it and like walk along the trail. I'll, I'm gonna share on this. I wonder if that's where they went last week. I don't, I don't know. So you want to travel west? Well, well, maybe just to the. Uh, I think we should just go to the follow this the, west to the inlet. trail. Inlet, like, how and much then go did they back. tell us about start? I was just go wondering ahead. how much they told us about what they did last week. Oh, I thought, uh, I thought Flanagan, you didn't go last week. It was, oh no, it was, uh, Folger went last week. Yeah. That's why I was I, asking if anybody in the group had gone. I'd like to suggest we go to the inlet to here and then follow the old, do the same route that we did last, uh, a week ago to the mouth of the cave. Um, yeah. Just take the take the road we know to that point, and then track from there. Okay, that's my. Okay. I think that's what we'll do then. Uh, as Flanagan said, we'll we'll uh, head to the inlet, travel along the road, keep an eye out uh, into the distance. Okay. Uh, let's see. I make small talk with Jor about his homeland. Since he's uh, a barbarian, it must not be from around here either. Actually, I made a mistake. I don't know. I was, I got confused the other night. I was playing on a thief. Oh, I, I know that you're not a barbarian class because there is no such thing. But I, you know, I thought you were playing as if you're a barbarian because I play a barbarian in another game that I'm not a barbarian. I'm being confused. That's I'm right. That's all the time. Uh, Actually, if fuck, you're willing to oh, take fuck, a, it, entertain me with a brief interlude of roleplay, who are you people? I don't know anything about any of you. That's true. We right. can talk about our characters real quick. That might be a good idea. In a basic sense, in character, you all know each other. Uh, right, but, right. Uh, but that being said, if you want to do the intro thing, yeah, go ahead. So, like, Gerald is a man-at-arms of a very minor knight from the south. 
he nice. went on a religious pilgrimage and he had a vision and he decided to come up here to go die die in a chaos hole against chaos. Yes, nice. That's my story. Nice. Yor is a thief that grew up in a city uh, as a uh, pretty much like a street urchin. Went up through the ranks, you know, stealing, uh, you know, pickpocketing, stealing food to get what he needed. Up through kind of being a bodyguard for a little bit, maybe for somebody important. And now he's left his city in the hopes of finding a better life. Cool. Al- Alaric is a uh, a warrior. He's was training uh, along with an order of uh, monks and stuff like that. Uh, his uh, brother is a uh, priest of the light, but he decided that he was not getting any kind of. Uh, he was a younger brother and felt very much in the shadow, so decided he wanted to go out and make a name for himself outside of uh, of the monastery. They were both orphaned and raised there and decided uh, he's going out and he heard about this place and the Mount, the Dungeon of Graves and figured perfect place to make your name. There you go. Caden is um, a lot like Gerald. He, uh, they just came down here to fight chaos, really. There you go. That's all there is to him. Yeah, Flanagan's just a, Flanagan's a small town fellow who's tried to tried his hand at all kinds of things, potato farming and uh, helping out on other farms, and nothing's ever worked out quite well, and he's not so bad with a sword, and uh, he made his way up here, and he's managed to survive for a month, and that's what? the most can, important thing he's ever done I in his life. I can vouch that he's good with a sword and a man that stands behind you in the middle of uh, horrible messes that we've gotten ourselves into from time to time. I see him behind all of you from a distance shooting at things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, he's been, he was the torchbearer for the first two sessions before my other character died. That's grand. Yep. And he stood, as opposed to one of our others that, uh, you know, lost it, made a puddle, and ran. Right. <laughs> also understandable. Oh, yeah. He's thinking about a dog ranch up here, but it uh, might take some time. Oh, nice. I could have a kobold ranch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So while we're talking, we are remaining alert to the surroundings. Yeah. Because uh, we don't know if they ambush in various places. Speak for yourself. My wisdom is eight. I am not particularly alert. I'm not a bright man, but I am somewhat wise. Actually, it's my damn best I- stat. That's all Caden has going for him is his wisdom. Yeah, I'm pretty average on those things. <clears throat> um, I'll give you just a second here. But don't ask me to light up a uh, torch while holding my sword in my hand. That's too complicated. <laughs> okay. So, you. Uh, this takes you. Uh, the better part of a day. It takes several hours uh, to walk out uh, to the west of this delta here. It's several miles away. And you uh, make it there. You can see where the waters have receded and the stone statue has been uh, torn down. Um, <clears throat> uh, Gerald, you can see a demonic like stone head pulled off uh, of what was once a stone base, now jutting halfway up out of the mud. Um, and uh, it's at that point that you hear a sound. Uh, oh, God. Gerald, roll a d6. One second. I roll a two. Two. That's bad. Um, oh. It's not ideal. Uh, it seems as if in the... Uh, uh, the forest and stones nearby. Uh, creatures here have attempted to set up a uh, oh snap an opportunity. There are all these little tiny humanoids that you can suddenly see as little mm-hmm. bolts and arrows and stones start flinging past your head. Uh, they get a surprise round. 
Whoa, yeah. who are these uh, four, these f other five people? Are they the um, oh. buddies? Yeah, they're your buddies. Oh, okay. What happened to the woman from last time? Is she gone? Yeah, she, yes, uh, she's not with she us. Left. Left. Oh, okay. I think she might have had something to do with that tower in town. These actually should be further back, and oh. I will I will put them further back. Um, so These are kobolds, right? Uh, I don't know that you would know what a kobold is, but, oh, okay. I, will, but I will tell I you that a, they are the ones that would accompany the things the, uh, we saw last time. These the do ogre. not; these do not look like those things. Uh, okay. These oh, like, okay. These look like mutated, lumpen, deformed humans, except small, like okay. half the size oh. of a human. But, ah, uh, feral um, halflings! I hate those. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> I've I, heard of fantastic. them. So oh. the good news is that. Um, they start rushing up from the brush, uh, but they are a, a solid, and this is not feet, this is yards. Um, at least 90 yards away. Okay. So, let's see here. Outdoor combat, base movement divided by three for yards. So, they're able to do 40 yards. And so they're immediately going to come up and try to get within range. And I think they're going to hit at minus two because they are less than double the range, but beyond the range of their weapons, if I recall hey. correctly. So let's see here. But they're yeah, not going to leave cover. Range. We've got meat shields. Yeah, there are boon points. companions. Be nice. So they're going to stay in yeah. the bushes. And two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh boy. Oops. Oh. One of them hits. Actually, no, two of them hit. You hear a yelp from the big guy as a stone strikes him in the skull. Solid. And uh, okay. the, one, the one, the other one with the tabard, Neeson, um, he also yelps as a bolt smacks into him, and then uh, Sirk draws out uh, his his mace into the air into the sunlight, and he says, "For the light." And um, what do you do? What, they're using slings. Is that what? Yeah, hit him? slings and makeshift short bows and. So he got hit by one sling for two d four or two slings. It's two different. Uh, two different. Oh, okay. Uh, these okay, are. Okay, he got hit for as I thought he got no. hit once. Yeah. Ow. Two different Ow. people. Well, I'm. I uh, Flanagan's going to. Uh, if he's if they're charging, Flanagan pulls out his bow and is going to stand. Would like to stand here and attack. That's. Okay. That's you can take right. advantage of cover if you wanted. I to. say get cover, Flanagan. Although I don't think you can do that in fire on this round, so there's that. It has yeah. To, or yeah. I just generally, I mean, I, I don't want to run, but yeah, I, I, Flanagan was, wants to grab his bow, run for cover up here. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's the range of your? Is it a long bow? It's a short bow. Short bow. I think it's sixty feet okay. or something. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, sixty feet. I think. Yeah. Okay, so you would be out of range from there. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't be out of range. You'd just be... Well, anyways. Okay. Long range. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to do... I'll say that you're within range. I'm, I, 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 this is an abstraction anyways. You're within range, but you'll have the penalty, which is that minus two. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. So you move over, over here. Okay. Yeah, um, first priority is... It's just catching cover behind here and then pulling out arrows. If I don't get to shoot this turn, that's okay with me. I don't mind. Yeah. Okay. What, what's everybody else doing? What's the group doing? What's the George's plan? George's going to go backwards what's... towards the grove in the corner and use that for his cover. So the plan is the plan's to fight? Is that the plan? That feels like it is. Uh, yeah, for as long as we can, if we can uh, beat these guys, but if things seem to go south, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to We'll, we'll head out, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, if these guys want to run and charge them, then uh, that we've got some. I think we've got a pretty good chance, at least to yeah. start. Yeah. Especially if we're using bows. Yep. Yeah. Well, I got to pull out this sling and just follow these guys and get as close as they can. All right. But if if anybody stay as far away. Um, if anybody's moving, um, you can go ahead and move or do missile fire. And you can attack and roll for uh, to hit and for damage if you're doing that. So can, can I roll a shot? Do I have time to take a one arrow not, shot? Not if you moved. You can either move okay. or do missile fire. I got it. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, Is there a way to measure and move in one at once? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. With uh, that movement like and... Uh, let's see. He is going to. He's in heavy armor, so okay. he's going to make right it back about here. this far, and then dodge under this uh, this cover here. That's the best that they're going to do this round, and I'll give them a bonus. It's not a lot. I'll give them like a plus, a minus two to hit, okay. and then these folks. Realizing the situation they're in, they're going to try to flank and they do the same thing. Because this is a copse of trees and you have a lot of options, I'll give you a plus four. Um, and you're also really far away. Okay. okay. All right. So that's... Uh, then... Uh, what's Jor... Did you... Re what's Jor doing? Jor, uh, I think he said he's going to retreat up to the back there. Oh. Is that, is that Jor up in the top? Okay. Top right. All right. All right. Uh, I unfortunately, do not have any good ranged things, and I'm terrible at range. But uh, yeah, I didn't write down apparently the range here for uh, sling, but I know it's got to be short. Oh wait, they use slings on us, so I guess I could fire, but not right now because I moved to get there. Okay. Yeah, well, that's when I turn moving and getting my range oh, we weapons can't move, ready. Ed. Yeah, you can't move and do missile fire at the same time. Oh, okay. So that would be your all's turn. Um, and then, let's see, they're all going to try to hit the people that are charging, because that's like the obvious thing to do. Man, he'll stay in the tree, so... Yeah, I'm trying to do cover. Yeah, if I can't shoot, I would stay in the cover. Okay, let's see here. Oh, uh, well, you're dead, motherfucker. One of them hits... For four damage. And um, you hear a, a screaming sound uh, and a dramatic flailing of arms uh, as uh, Neeson is hit with a, 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 another bolt and starts crawling around the, along the ground. And that is their turn. What's the plan? What's your all, what do you all do? Okay, so they didn't move any further. The uh, They're hanging around those trees there, right? Yeah. They have a penalty to hit right now. I'm sorry. Actually, they did not hit because they have both a penalty to hit and uh, they're in cover. So that would not have hit uh, minus How four. How do you do yeah. the thing to see the range? No, no. Because actually, they did hit because it's a 20. If you go into the upper left corner of the screen, you'll yes, see uh, the selection of the it. It's it's kind it. of using, the top. The, the range is not set up right, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. This is like, let me just set it up. It's like this. Uh, it's like Oops. index card RPG right now. It's like near, medium, f far. Well, you know? my, so, my so guess... So you, you can hit them. Uh, actually, what's your intention? What are you trying my, to do? My, my question here is, uh, how, how close are we in, in attack charge position as well as the range for th using the sling? Huh? Uh, if I was to run forward i'd be able to attack in this round i'm not going to i just want to know ah, my positioning yeah uh for, let's see i think from where you are you could basically make it to I'm this cover movement. or this cover um but but you wouldn't be able to make it all the way down to them i don't think from where you are. okay because i got 12 movement still oh oh uh yeah i'll say that you can make them to make it to that copse of trees if you wanted okay then yeah i'm sorry i, I was i was thinking that you all had you know I'm going to do a, a a very stupid thing because I don't want to be fired on. Okay. Um, oh, wait. No, I'm a lot wiser than that. Uh, I'm going to toss sling arrows for this round. Yeah. So, that's so what the I'm plan doing. is to fight. Is that the, the plan? Oh, yeah. Still, we're on fight. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, I say we'll travel. we, we, we see what they these. do in response to our missile combat, and then perhaps based on that information, maybe we charge one of the smaller groups next round and try oh. to scatter them. Sure. Flanagan is actually already on the move. Flanagan's going to run up to this Well, bush. hold on. Hold on. We've got to roll for initiative. Oh, yep. Yeah, okay. And you, uh, can, you can roll a d6, Flanagan. Okay. And I tell Flanagan I'll be following you after my, my initial shot. Flanagan just nods and then has his bow and runs. We got a six, so we win that one, eh? Uh, yeah. So no spells, right? Okay. Nope. If no spells, then yeah, you can move or go ahead and roll to hit and damage for missile fire if anybody's doing it. These two are going to run, and they're going to dive and go prone. Uh, so they're not going to be able to do anything else, and it's going to reduce their movement to get to the next trees, but I'll give them a plus four. You could do that this, as well. Or I'm yeah. Or if you're up, uh, you can get a plus two to your AC for cover. So uh, if, no, I'm just, I was imagining running and just diving. So are, okay, are these the two... Four, which are the two that are with me? Uh, that is uh, Call and Connell, the big guy and the the rascally one. Oh, well, I can't move okay. and then attack. Can I attack as a move? You can move and do a melee attack if you can make it. But from where you are, I don't think but you I can. can. I can't do a missile attack of the move? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's the second turn, right? Our yeah. second turn? Yeah, second turn. All right. Yeah. I'm going to put fire on these two goblins here uh, from my position using my short bow. These two right here? Yes. All righty. Uh, I think from that position, I'll say it's a normal distance. So All because right. they have cover, uh, it'll be a... Which I'll do the math on my end if it hits. I'm not super concerned. I think I have the statistical advantage here. Where's the shoot button? Here we are. What'd you it's good. What'd you get? Uh, hit AC 21 and yeah. four damage. Four damage. And I get okay. to shoot twice, I believe. As nice. a short bow has a rate yep. of fire of two. I gotta get me a bow, but I got no money for that. Oh, a short bow has that too. Wow. Yep, all bows. Nice. Uh, I will try to throw a sling stone from here. Which is why I talked about us all equipping ourselves with bow on the... If, you're, if you're doing missile fire, roll to hit and roll to damage. Everybody. Uh, everybody that's doing it. And if you're moving, oh, nice. go ahead I already move. rolled and missed. Okay. I'd have a hit of four damage, I think. All right. Uh, what did what did you what did you uh, roll? Uh, eighteen. Eighteen minus two does it. And so for four damage, you also kill one. Yay. Okay. Um, I'm down to nine, eighteen arrows. Put the, that in the thing again. The roll is what roll. What's 1D20? that? Oh, you can use the toolbar if you want. Are you trying to do a missile attack? Yes. Uh, I have. Did you retreat? I have that you're up in the far corner. Yeah, I went back there and I uh, I kind of hid out in the bushes back there. Okay, I'm gonna say that's too far away. I think you need to get. Oh, okay. Into all right, like, then I'll I'll move this round then. Okay. I'll, I'll head over here. Would that be possible for me to get there? Yeah, yeah. Way, you, you can make it to that copse of trees. Okay. Okay, that's where I'll do this round then. All right, it's their turn, um, and so let's see. There are fire and up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, they are still going to try to hit the ones that are under cover there. Oh wait, actually, uh, they didn't move on your all's turn so they're going to move as well and they are going to um, move into these trees and then hunker down and Sirk is going to be um, he's going to cast cure light wounds on Neeson actually actually no he, he had to declare that at the top of the round so he's going to be like you know don't die on me so they're going to go into these trees and hunker down for cover oh man he must be at level 2 and he could be level one with good wisdom. No, you can't cast spells at level one level three. Right, if you get a bonus on wisdom, you get it. Yeah. All right. Um, Wait, really? You just don't have any spells memorized, but you do get your bonuses on wisdom. Minus two. That does not hit. Okay. Uh, it's your all's. Uh, let's see. Initiative again. So I call. Uh, 
I say to uh, whoever's next to me, I don't know icons very well yet. Uh, I'm going to try to hit the the outside ones to flank. So I'm going to run down directly south. Like here? No, uh, the outside ones. If I can reach them in one round, I will. If not, then I'm going to go to the copes within range of them. So either I'm going to go straight down here. Oh, sorry. I forgot that that does that. Or I'm going to go behind the copes. Yeah, I think you could probably make it there in one turn, but I don't think you can yeah, make it here. Yeah, because my mo movement is... Let me see. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it, uh, because this is set up for feet. And yeah, we're doing I can move and... running 480 feet per turn, oh, uh, nice. but not, not attack or anything. That's just running for a combat... You know, you can only move, uh, you know, like f 40 yards, I think it is. All right, Alaric, right. roll no, a d6. I'll follow you. Okay. Three, roll again. Wait, hold on. No, I got a four. That was Jay. That's okay. something about that was me. Okay. Um,. That makes it their turn, and they're going to once again try to uh, attack these people. But they're hunkered down, and uh, bolts and stones and stuff are just flying into these this copse of trees, and they're holding their shields up, and um, and uh, Sirk is screaming in defiance against them. And it's your turn. What's the plan? Combat? We're fighting? Yep, I'm Any still... Yes. Any spells? No, no spells. Uh, Sirik oh. will. He's going to cast Cure Light Wounds. Uh, keep forgetting to hit the point. And well, I, I can't I know cast that any goes spells. At the end, but they didn't hit him, so it doesn't matter. Actually, I was supposed to do that at the top and then do initiative, but they didn't hit him anyways. Okay. And if you're going to move or do missile fire, if you're doing missile fire, roll a d20 and roll your damage. And announce who you're shooting at, and then if you're moving, go ahead and move your token. If you're up okay. here, uh, I'll say that you know you can make it kind of the edge to the edge of this copse or to here. Uh, or if you're here, I'll say that you can make it down here. I move. Well, okay, I won't attack uh, that. I'll just. Following, uh, yeah, I want to get behind this rock. Following Elric. Well, again, runs and uh, dives down into the trees with these uh, with Cyril and the other one. All right. Um, let's see. These two are also going to move, and they're going to dive down again as well. And they're actually surprisingly one of the one with the the big guy. He's going to get in front of um, um, Neeson and raise his shield and actually take the cut. Yeah. Um, and this work. And and you actually see Connell. The shifty one take out a bow and start to fire, uh, but not this turn, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I blow my whistle and I call for the uh, the uh, the men from the south to engage <laughs> as, at the loudest I can. All right, uh, and let's I blow see. the whistle. Any spells this turn or retreats? What's the plan? No, pl okay. Plans combat. No fighting. That no spells or retreats. All right. Well, other than that, when I run forward, I'll be whistling and calling for the engagement from the south, right when I charge. Okay. Um, I'll second before I charge. Um, they don't understand your eloquent tongue. Uh, they speak some sort of corrupted and horrible pigeon tongue of chaos. Um, and uh, Gerald, you can roll a d6 for initiative. Aiden's looking around, like, what, what men from the south? Oh, sorry, I'm Gerald. D6ing. Five. Five. Is that good or bad? Roll again. Six. You got it. Mm -hmm. You're now all on your side first. Up. And let's see. These are all going to fire missiles now until they can try to winnow them. As am I. Um, so. We do a shot, and then at the end of the round, we get our second missile shot, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's second optional. missile shot is at the end of the round. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's optional. And so I'm going to say that you can go ahead and just fire. So if you're doing missile fire, fire everything. So, but fire the first thing is, uh, you know, 
All right, we already did initiative. So then if you're moving, go ahead and move your token. If you're firing missiles, roll to hit and damage. And all of all of it that you're doing, we'll go ahead and roll for these. Oh, wow. They rocked. Really. Yeah, I missed. I rolled two ones on 1d20 for my two hits. Oh. Oh, well, that's right. We get two attacks, don't we? Or is that the thing? Yes. Bows. You get two attacks. Bows. I think I hit once. I'm not sure. Our highest Our attack is a 15. Twice. Will that hit them? Hold on. Sorry. I haven't needed to ask since I rolled a four. Okay. Well, right off the bat, your allies are able to kill several of them. Well, that's good. Yay. And then, um, all right. And then... I'll announce the target number. You need to you need to roll to hit ascending armor class thirteen, but they're in cover, so it's a uh, fifteen. We're good. Yeah, I, I hit one I for six. Oh, you you got one for six damage. All right, you kill one. All right. Cool. Flanagan's two arrows go flying way overhead, but some of them fall, and he he sees that he misses, but he's like, I got one. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, top of the round. Any spells, retreats? What's the plan? Oh, quick check. Wait, we the one that I killed was on the yet. left side or the west side, not yeah. on the east side. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, combat. It's not the next round yet because we didn't attack the people on ground. Huh? Ground? What? Say that again. Could you rephrase that? I'm sorry. We did missile fire, but we didn't do the. I was charging oh, forward. Oh yeah, no charge. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you it, it, uh, melee during during the missile, so during missile fire you can move. All right, so you moved. Awesome, and then yeah, you can roll to hit for melee. Okay. And they, I don't know why I clicked twice by accident. They get nice. the first that, one. That's as good as it gets. Good hit. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Um, at the top of the round, they are definitely going to make a morale check, which amazingly they pass. Wow. Um, and uh, these two goblins are going to, amongst their many dead, stand their ground to the end. What do you all do? Combat? Or... I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Spells, Creatures are chaos. Retreats. Those spells are retreats. Okay. You can move your token. Uh, I think everybody can. I can Make it. Can I make it to them? Okay. But now I'm going to charge a melee with my uh, mace. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to fire any more of my bow because there's too many friendlies up there. I'll just stand back. I, I was reading the rules and there's a there's a really interesting one. I'm not applying all the rules if that's not clear. Uh, one of the ones that is interesting I'm not applying is each type of weapon has different types of grid distance that you can use adjacent to other allies. Oh. So, like, if you have a two-handed weapon, you have to have at least 10 feet of clearance. You can't use it next to someone. And you can have oh. three people in one grid if you're using a piercing weapon. Anyways, it doesn't cool. matter. Now, if that comes up, we could do it. But th the point right now, I'm, I'm saying, like, you know, it doesn't matter. Because, you are you know, it, everyone can, can get within range of these, these things right now. It's, I got a 17 for three damage. So, is... Is, is that the plan? Is everybody? Is anybody doing any missile attacks, Jor? No, but I'm I'm gonna go over here and start looking through his pockets for a belly button lid. Okay, I'll get back to you on that. Yep. Um, all right. Is, so everybody else is coming to stab the two that are yep. left. Okay. Everybody can roll to hit and roll for damage. What did you say you got, uh, John? Uh, seventeen and three damage. Okay. So you seventeen and seven. One. Okay, you killed the last one. All right. I wipe my blade down. I went well. Victory for the light. I went surprisingly well. How so, is uh, Neeson doing? Yeah, I go checking on him. Neeson, he looks kind of a little worse for wear. Um, uh, there is a uh, a tear in his chain mail at his shoulder, and uh, Sarek has his arm around uh, Neeson, and he says uh, in response to. Um, in, a, in response to Caden, for the light, ah! and uh, Neeson weakly also joins in the, the cheer out loud. Um, 
and let me take a look. Uh, you just need some duct tape, it'll be fine. This is too small. Well, again, oh, says, so, go ahead. So does that mean I can have a spell at level one? If you're, if you have a wisdom bonus, unless Ross understands it differently, unless you have, a, if you have a wisdom bonus, you get plus one first level spell. Yeah, this is this this game. I I don't know the specifics. I didn't I didn't look at it, but it's cr yeah, so, it, yeah. it's crunchier, uh, and I, I keep being surprised by that. It's crunchier than uh, than BX or old school essentials. Like there's all these little little yeah. specific things all the time like that. Where if you have some like, kind of bonus, you have this other thing, and you can yeah, stack the, these bonuses. But SE has the same thing. Uh, plus one spells based on wisdom, right? No, it has a hard chart, and if you're a cleric and you're level one, oh, no that... spells. You do not have oh, spells okay. level one. Yeah, oh, the uh, okay. PDF that now, I was looking at didn't have that in it. I will say in Swords of I, without looking at it, whatever the spell chart has also, like if it shows no spells at level one, then you might be able to know that uh, as a magic, whatever. But uh, I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm not going to go into it right now. we talk about it later. Mm -hmm. uh, let me look at this. Uh, let's see. Give me a second. Interesting. Strange creatures. They look ill. Why don't again uh, slap some of these new guys on the shoulder? Colin, uh, Coral, Connell. I like well, to this big slimy thing we saw. Sorry. Y'all gonna like that? this? I was gonna say you should see this big slimy thing we saw last week. Slimy thing. Yeah, it was a big cube, and I had like. Dead stuff That's in it. Right. That's right. Yep, that was a that was a something to behold. These creatures, though, he kind of rolls one over, and uh, with his boot and looks at it. Uh, this is uh, well, more my more easy to deal with. They look more like they they bleed like we do, I guess. I am um, taking my time to work something out but I think it's something pretty great so cool. it's, it's worth it uh, let me see here I'll let you finish that before I interrupt you with anything uh, and for the person who was asking about the spells I, I read it yes it is like many things in this game open to interpretation so uh yeah i just so far all the dms i did with did that but yes it just says you have one more first level spell so you know if at, if you're not supposed to have any spells at first level meaning that's a hard thing then then you wouldn't get that until you get a first level spell at second level then you yeah. have two first level spells that's, that's what i was thinking right it just uh, i was from other DMs because the same rule in AD and D gives you one at first level, but in AD and D right. you do get a le spell level at first. So it's probably you're probably right, even though Matt and uh, and Bill do it the other way. But it, as written, I think it is right that you don't. It looks like a druid does. Yes. Um, okay, so uh, Jor, you go and you uh, check these goblins uh, for pocket lint. Uh, it's disgusting. They have nothing. Yeah. Particularly of value, however, as you're searching around in the bodies and dragging them around and poking at them and everything, you can see drag marks off in the distance from where they were coming to the south. Uh, oh. The good news, you all have defeated a goblin horde in the wild. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, the great news about goblins is they you weren't their first mark. And uh, so you have found all of the things that that they found 
And um, I like the sound uh, of this. Uh, they had uh, been dragging these um, uh, these sacks uh, that you find am- amongst them. Uh, they're bloodied, and there's uh, gross, nasty things inside of it. But you can see that there are piles upon piles upon piles of coins. Um, I have uh, four thousand electrum pieces worth of coins Ooh. that somebody uh, these goblins were way more successful against someone else um, and uh, you find with them a scroll uh, that uh, is also bloodied and torn but uh, as you look at it well actually let's not look at it find a scroll you let me know what you want to do with it and you also find a vial of um of fluid, um, and uh, it has a bright green coloration to it. Hey, I would like to check out the scroll. You kind of like unroll it and, and look at it. Yeah. When you look at the scroll, uh, it kind of causes your eyes to hurt. There are these symbols. Uh, all of them kind of fading into each other and turning in this kind of MC Escher kind of way with um, whatever those like pentagram type things are. And uh, you can, it's obvious that this is uh, some sort of uh, magical scroll, uh, but you're not sure what. Uh, but some, an arcanist would be interested in this. Uh, it doesn't look like a cleric scroll. No. No, I'm probably um, going to put it in my pocket. I think Flanagan's just like laying out all the electrum Wait, onto a I think I might piece of Go ahead. cloth and just separating it out. Uh, we're going to have to, this is a lot to carry. We're going to have to split this up. We might as well uh, dole out our shares right here. Oh, so that's true. Yeah, and you're only three and a yeah. half miles away from Zelkor's Ferry. And uh, also, yeah. I apologize. I'm wrong. This is a cleric spell. Oh, good. Uh, I was so, gonna say I was gonna oh, go okay. first, uh, hang on to it in case we get a wizard. This is player, this but. is fun, honestly. I don't know the rules for this in Swords and Wizardry, but I I like I already know like it's got to be crunchy, right? Like, what is the rule for knowing magic? Because it's got that A D and D D to it. It's the uh, well, yeah. It's funny because A D and D is it, it, com- Swords and Wizardry complete is the very last update right. to zero e before ad and d came out so it's very close to ad and d uh yeah you, a, a cleric should be able to cast from a scroll without any special wizards have to do special things but right. cleric can cleric just read it and cast it okay so uh yeah so uh caden when you look at the scroll as you keep unscrolling it you can see that uh it has sacred writing in it uh the language of the light uh like latin and uh, this is a abjuration of protection against evil forces. Ah, yeah, I will keep that though. Nice. Got some stuff going on. Got some uh, abilities here. Protection from evil last two hours. Yeah, and if it's crazy stuff that uh, like otherworldly things they can't cross the they can't uh no that's a radius one that's the higher level one yeah they get minuses or something or they don't attack him i think i don't remember it's so specific to him so you have all these dead goblins you find all this stuff uh what, what's the plan what do you all do um well uh, i'd like to split up the electrum i mean that's 500 each if we take it uh if everybody takes a bit and what is that for carrying for hauling But can we? Uh, is it like five pounds, or or is it less? But like ten pounds. I don't, I don't know, know how many pounds. Gold. I don't know how many coins to a pound in this world. It certainly sounds like a fuck ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. Four four hundred each. Yeah. Four hundred electrum pieces each. Yeah. So four hundred electrum co- pieces each. Uh, it has. Oh, are uh, there ten of them? Yeah, because okay. there are. I'm sorry that. Uh, there are four with you. My bad. Four with you. Um, yep, for now. Okay, so that would be uh, nine. So. Oh wait, uh, and there are 
Right, there were five of us, sorry. Is it so, five of us? Yeah, there are five of you and four of them, and they wanted an equal share, and that was part of the deal, so that would be... Yeah, that's fair. 445 Electrum each. Okay. So it's uh, it looks like it's a uh, ten, a tenth of a pound per coin. Exactly. Yeah, it's pretty standard in AD and D as well. Tenth. Yeah, that's comically heavy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you all are carrying a uh, ton of treasure now. There's plenty of articles on on the heaviness of that. What, what's the conversion to gold for that? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but we'll, we'll, okay. I'll get back to you on that. It's either something three or five. Yeah, it's something off. I can't it's, yeah, every other one is tens. This is either three or five. I don't remember. Oh, okay. But that's... Oh, super. I'm sorry. Super... I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead. Um, okay, well, whatever the case may be, we're each carrying 44 extra pounds. Um, and I'm thinking we... Uh, I think that Flanagan's like, well, that's, that's a lot of... That's a lot. I, I, I think we should just get back to Zelkor's ferry with that. There's no need to get out with that, that ogre with all this. Yeah, my character will probably agree. Is As anyone? I... Sorry, go ahead. I was of the opinion that you know, longer route here, we might end up with more for us. Yeah, yeah I. My opinion, if I if we didn't have a whole crew of people we didn't know. Uh, my opinion would have been to go off and bury the money and continue, but we are with people who I don't know and who might run, and then we might not have our treasure when we get there. Exactly. So uh, I think yeah. we should definitely return, even though it goes against everything I want to do. What were you saying? There Richard? is one task we should take care of before we return. Uh, we should properly dispose of the dead. To do otherwise would be dishonorable. Well, do we find any uh, of their victims? I'd like to, before we head out, like circle around and see if we can find victims nearby. Yeah, if we can give their victims the proper burial. To... Well, what about the, the, the these, like, chaos? Stack them and burn them. Stack them and burn them. Okay. Oh, they're creatures of chaos. Um, uh, yeah, they need the lights light more than anybody. <laughs> the, so shitty. Um,. What was I going to say? Uh, ah, the the victims. Uh, um, uh, to, uh, sorry to be so gruesome, but the best you find are the parts and pieces in the bags amongst the coins. Uh, that's not good. Is there any of their equipment or anything laying around? Or? No. So there's oh, nothing okay. we can take back to Barry. All right. And was there any identifying marks as to where they came from or anything that we can give a message to somebody so they're not, you know, forever wondering? Any identifying jewelry or anything? No. Even if it's no value whatsoever. Okay. It looks like okay. the, the goblins came up from the south. Matt, were you going to say something? Oh, I was listening. No, that's all. I, I was going to say, Caden, just as a prayer for the, the remains. Let the camera go up. Yeah. Okay. So stacking and burning the goblins is that the plan? Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do they have any noteworthy equipment? Anything that's worth salvaging? No. Yeah, not really. Slings, if you want them, that's about it. Stones, we can always get. So. It's true, and the slings are also quite cheap. I'll say a prayer over the burning corpses and move on. Okay. Um, is anyone? Yeah. Go ahead. Currently weighing more than a hundred pounds. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, before yeah. this, did anyone weigh 100, more than 100 pounds before this? No. No. Okay. Important question for reasons. Um, okay. In that case, you're able to make it back at a normal pace to Zelkor's Ferry uh, as night falls on the first day. Um, what do you do? I really wish to... Uh to drop off stuff and and go back out, but right. yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess, the, where do you I mean, drop off this kind of light in the day left? I guess it depends how long we're playing for. Like, if you want to end early, Ross, and we've only got twenty minutes left, do we have time for that? I don't know. I think you could make a foray out into the wilderness if you wanted, and then sure. however okay. far you get, we just end it, you know, and you say you make it back. Okay. Yeah, I'm into that too. Just drop off this go this electrum and. Uh, See if these other guys want to go back out with us. All right. What do we do with the vial, by the way? Who has that vial? 
Uh, I guess I've got it, if no one else does. Sure. Better you than the four other guys. Okay. I'm just going to mark the Electrum coin. I'm going to split up the Electrum coin into stuff I'm carrying and the stuff uh, like that is at home. How Do we have to worry about like protecting our treasure like at our, our inn or room? So basically... Like, what is the perfect way to protect that? If you pay the gold piece each day for Zelkor's Ferry, you can assume your goods are secure. If you do not cool. or cannot, then no, they're not secure. Um, okay, good. And then once you buy a house, if you purchase locks and things like that, then you don't have to pay, pay any more money, uh, you know, and then you can secure it there. Cool. So. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking we should do that at some point. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's nighttime. Do you um, do you stay the night or do you head out into the in the dark to explore? I think just stay the night. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we can do that. Yeah, cool. All right, that'll be another gold piece for the night. Okay. Yeah. Um. And uh, that covers food and lodging. So uh, is it two electric, one gold, or is it something different? Do you know? I'll, I'll look it I up. guess we'll figure that out after. Yeah, yeah actually, I'll just figure that out later. Um, I think it's like... Never mind. I think it's like the the halfway point, if I recall, from between silver and gold or something like that. It's like an off number. So, But I'll, I'll look it up later. Um, okay, so... Um, the sun rises on the next day. And... Uh, and what do you do? Also, Matt, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? I'm not sure what's going on with my camera. Okay, yeah, we can hear I can you. hear you. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure. what I've tried reloading my camera a couple times, but it's not. All right, Alaric. What's going the, on? But no, I hear you guys. Bud. What is the plan? Uh, well, we're going to try to go along that, uh, you know, path again along the river. And uh, heading south toward the mouth of doom so we can at least see if there's any uh, idea of tracks um we're gonna when before we leave i'd like to tell uh otto there that uh we ran across some uh these uh, little small bestial creatures of chaos that we defeated off the road they apparently have been preying on people so you know word to the wise they came in larger numbers and ambushed nice I should have kept ears. Could have had proof of our accomplishment. Oh well. <laughs> I thought you wanted to give a decent burial. Now you want to keep ears? I think I'm probably good with light without ears. I contain multitudes. Okay, so we're gonna head down the road. Um, not the road, whatever the path. It's not really much of a road. Uh, hugging the river, continuing to be alert because we were we were surprised the last time. So uh, a little less uh, schmoozing among the party this time, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, make it back to the statue again, and um, there is the funeral pyre uh, that has smoldered with all the dead goblins that you find, and uh, the path that leads southwest and south. And you see a hillside off to the west, um, a bald hillside, and um, the riverfront has receded here, but the river still has a current. Have we ever taken the left path here? Like heading up river? Or upstream? No, you just highlighted it on the west. Yeah. Um, oh. That was my original thought, but I think maybe uh, Flanagan's right about starting at the mouth and going from there. But I originally was talking about heading along the west side of it. Oh, okay. Whatever you guys think, I'm, I'm okay with anything. Yeah. Yeah. Make a call. Well, you know what? We're going to have uh, less time today left. So maybe we do, we'll go along the west just to do an exploration and see what we run across. Yeah, yeah. and then we haven't showed these four new guys where the mouth of the cave is, too. That's another good point. We uh, want to be there, take it down. They'll figure it out. Yeah, they probably will, but they don't need our help. 
So yeah, let's take that western branch of the uh, thing and head south along there. So it's southwest or whatever. There we go. Work. As the sun sets and you Ooh, travel along woods. the path, um, you uh, you come upon a small lake. Okay. And uh, at this lake are grazing along its receded shorelines two deer, a baby and a doe. Uh, in addition, further to the west, you can see a forest and a mostly bald hillside to the northwest uh, with a forest on the back side of it eking out over the top. Okay. I'm partial to letting the deer continue myself. Yeah, the, there's not much meat to get from those. Yeah. Um, we're on this. Um, why don't we head into the forest and see, you know, what's in there? Oh, by the way, uh, is Neil, what, Neil? Uh, Nalen? I can't, I forgot. So let me see. Uh, Neeson. Is Neeson uh, healthy? Did he get healed before we went out? Yeah, Neeson's, he's, uh, he's all right, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about asking that because I know he had a spell to heal him before, but I didn't know if it happened. All right, good. So why don't we, uh, well, actually, let's ask. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, George, mm. would you like to go toward the forest, you know, more kind of southwest where we are already? Or do you want to turn and go up toward that hill area? Up towards the hill. Okay. All right, guys. All right, let's uh, all right. check out that hill. Okay. Um, we have time. We'll continue. And the hill, you see a, uh, a cavern. Uh, there are burn marks all along the outside and drag marks in the mud. Um, it looks like all sorts of uh, branches have been snapped and piled at the entrance of the, the cavern, and uh, a big fire has been set to its entrance. I look down, oh, examine it. We just went. What kind of cavern are we talking here? Like it's is in the side of the, in the side of the hill, or? Yeah. So you have, uh, yeah, it's on the side of the hill, and you yeah. can. It, it has like a, a bit, a large mouth opening, like this, and then on the inside of it is a, a smaller, more narrow cave, and the entrance, uh, the the mouth of that narrow in, uh, cave, further into the mouth, is uh, like this, like an overhang. Okay, and inside, underneath the overhang, is this cave. And it's been piled up with brush and blocked, and uh, there's all kinds of uh, burnt cool. um, stuff there. Okay. If it's been blocked, then uh, let's get our uh, missile weapons out, and uh, and I'm terrible with missile weapons, so I will uh, help in clearing it. Maybe me and one other person. Yeah, I mean, before we even get up to it, I want to look yeah. around well out of uh like out of short bow long bow range and just are there tracks coming in and out of this uh like where are they is, is there is this a well-used track around here like I'd, I'd like to just sort of circumnavigate it a little bit first if, if that's okay it does look like there are tracks there are scrape marks along the mud leading up to the mouth entrance and around it you can even see uh, evidence of boot marks that have settled in the dusty heat over over uh, uh they're they're no more than a few days old Okay. Oh, never been a few days old. You mentioned so drag marks. Can we get any sense of like what might have been dragged, or how big it might have been? Looks like a person. Hmm. Oh, person. So it wasn't a bear. This isn't where they came. Do have we heard from? Do we know from Folger like anything? Is this where they were? Where they went? Do we know that? Only if they told you. <laughs> I wonder if this is where Folger and them got up to. Uh, yeah, let's let's take a closer look. Let's take a closer look. If it if it matches the description of what we heard, we'll move right on. Yeah, if you pull yeah. apart some of the the brush that uh, is yep. burnt and blocking the cave entrance, you just see a ashen, smoky cave on the inside, suffocated with all of the the dust and ash. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything uh, in here. Uh, there is evidence where things have. There's scuffles and stuff around the ground uh, and uh, drag marks along the mud, but you don't find anything else. No rotting bodies or anything like that? 
Oh, actually, I'm so sorry. There is one thing, because they didn't mention this. Uh, you find a skeleton in the back of the cave, but you don't find That's anything. That's a big thing to find. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing on the skeleton. Ah. Okay. Yeah, this must be where they went. Okay, well then let's uh, double time out uh, yep. and go toward the... Go ahead. Go. Jork? Do it. Yep, let's do it. All right, Jork, lead the way. All right, I'm going to be in the front. Go, go in uh, that direction. All right, we're going to head south into the forest from where we are. Okay, right. yep. As you make it to about right here, night has fallen and it's now dark outside. This would be a perfect place to camp, I think. For yeah. visibility. In that cave? Uh, yeah. Right up at... Yeah, right up sure. At, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Although we're not oh, down to pay that one gold, so... Uh, the cave would would corner us. The hill would expose us. What do you feel? I think better to be quiet. If we're going to have a fire, better to be down in the cover a little bit. Are you concerned okay. about our things back in town? Or... No, no. no. Well, I'm concerned that horrible goblins might see the light of our fire and decide, oh, let's go fill their sleeping bags with bees. Yes. Or whatever it is that yeah. they think. Their horrible little heads. Yeah, let's right. go in the cave and set up some of the brush up there as a little bit of a, a cover. Reset re that up, and then we'll have to... Uh, we will actually have to set up a watch. Yeah, and we'll clean up the cave yeah, a bit. Okay. And she... Great news. Uh, the night passes without incident uh, as you set up your watch. In the final watch, the sun rises. You're able to rest and um, carry on the next day. All right. Whoa. Let's uh, take a good look from the hilltop, see if anything we can get description wise, and then let's foray. From the hilltop, yeah, you can see. I'll take advantage of a nice hilltop to get a nice broad view. Yeah. yeah in fact, I'll give you that. Um, uh, let's see, from there, I'll say that your visibility increases and you can see terrain that's further off. And we're going to try to stay low when, when we're doing that, not like silhouette ourselves against the light or anything. Sure. Um, cool. So you can see uh, that there's this expanse of forest on either side of this, uh, this, this road that's in disrepair and basically disappears into brush. And then on the far end uh, is the something that many of you have become very accustomed to uh, and that is uh, this hillside uh, with uh, the stone structure on its side uh, there's a forested hill over here and you can see from where you are um oh no you wouldn't be able to see that from where you are yeah yeah that's that's about it yeah i you think can, across the river would be too far right yeah but well i will say i think you can see it looks like there's a muddy crossing here where um, this this tributary that comes from the main river has actually uh, this has turned into pools, and a lot of this is, is silt, and this right here is dry enough to where you think you could probably cross. Oh, wow. let's do it. Oh, we have time, Asper. Yeah, yeah, let's pick it up. Okay, that was my first. We're gonna skip uh, the we're gonna skip yeah. the uh, forest right below us. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we might as well do the forest first because it's so close. Let's let's go through the forest. If it happens yeah, quickly, then we'll keep the going. forest. Okay. It's so close. Let's set up uh, and travel in. How many we got here? We got nine. So let's set up into a uh, uh, a defensive formation, putting our softer ones toward the middle, since we got enough people, and make it kind of like a, a V. Maybe have one of our uh, stealthier people in the back, so they can fall behind and sneak if uh, if we encounter something and maybe not be seen. That'll be me. All right. You got it, George. You, you'll be our fallback guy. You okay. see trouble? Fall back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I got to tell George that twice. I, I've seen him in action. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fall back, hide, and shoot. Flanagan's stopping occasionally and pulling out this paper and... Uh, carefully trying to record everything that we're seeing which is what i'm doing cool all right we're gonna uh keep our ears open keep our talking to minimum especially as we approach that road and cross that road yep and see what we see all right in that case alaric roll a d6 
That's never good. Oh no, what'd you get? Two. Oh, that? Well, that is bad. Same as last time. Yep, same as last time. Hopefully they'll roll bad. Yeah. They could roll a one. That would be worse surprise than us if this is a surprise. But I don't think so. The odds are not in our favor. I may switch to feet. Um, I like the yard system for a lot of different reasons, uh, but I'm but I have an idea of how to use that procedure. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch in back a, to feet. So, in AD and D, they use the uh, yards. You know, your twelve inches becomes twelve yards instead of twelve feet in the dungeon. It's, they I, just made it that way. I like it because what it does is it turns it into a battlefield environment where you have a lot more. You you have decisions you can make so you can yeah. you can make different decisions if an enemy is 250 yards versus if they're yep. 60 feet that's a, those, those are yep. two different things yeah, um, cool. and so i'm gonna grant you that so don't don't worry um uh unfortunately uh and i'll roll those dice right now this is the really bad hopefully uh very good news okay that's good news um so it's gonna and this is how i'm gonna condense that because I apologize, these battle maps are not for yards, and I'll fix that later. But right now, it's going to take them two rounds to get to you. That's what it. That's what it comes down to. And unfortunately, what do we see? There are uh, other things that uh, are moving toward you. Uh, that is the best they can do on their round, though. Oh, we're looking at the door map still. Sorry, I'm getting it set up. I'll. Uh, there you there go. Go. I got to get myself a bow. Yeah, me too. Yeah, bows are pretty crazy, apparently. I'm hoping to uh, to find one on a body because uh -oh. I'm cheap. So you were heading oh, towards this road, good. and six, seven, three, four, five, seven, eight. One of these little horribles. Oh boy! And then there's six, two, four, uh. five. Six. There we go. That's too many. Um, oh my god. They are rushing into this gorge, blocking off your access to the road. So if you disappear back into the forest, there's a chance that some of them will pursue you, but if you're going to try to get onto the road or head east or south, you will uh, you have this large linear ambush that they've set up all along the road and in, in the gorges. And we can see them like running through the woods all around. Yeah, and and what this is amounts to is they, uh, the surprise is they saw you coming. They were able to set up into position. They're ready. So. Yeah, let's get that. Uh, like I think Fl Flanagan sees them. I'm imagining like any number of uh, m movies I've seen. I've never been in combat, but like Vietnam movies <laughs> where you uh, see what, like, what does Syracuse. Like, of, of figures going through the woods. You can't even tell how many there are, but it looks like there's a lot. We don't know how many yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like, let's get out of here. Like, we don't even know. They could be getting behind us and everything. Like, this is Yeah, this could end badly. Uh, to answer your question, Caden, uh, he, of course, is brandishing his mace, and he's like, the light sh smiles upon us, brothers. This is what we are here to do. This is our destiny. I'm going to eat it. The light uh, is giving us, at best, a diffident maybe smile. It is time for us. <laughs> the light's giving you a maybe at best. <laughs> Gerald, I think uh, I think you're both right. I think perhaps we fall back, and Sorry. maybe we can flank them. Caden's going to try to talk to out. He's like, oh, well, uh, we can try to flank them. Let's Why should we run at their position? Why don't we look like we've disengaged? And take a long way around, and if they're still there waiting for us, we can come at them from behind. If they're not, the light doesn't want us to die needlessly. What okay. use is there fighting a bunch of, of a bunch of these little scoundrels in the woods? Like we could we could do spend all day doing this and die like die like my yeah. George like yeah, George like yeah. I'm out of here. All right. Yeah, we're not. I'm not I'm, doing we this. Can, we can avoid him. Yeah, yeah. But we could try to avoid him. Certainly. Was I able to talk him out of it? The reason yeah. I. I worry about them, you know, b b bunching up on us at some point when we're not some paying attention. Some of them might follow us, but if they do, I think we could take care of them if a few of them follow us. I just don't think we could take yeah, them all. Yeah, Caden would have felt bad. 
Get a kid killed. So, Caden, to answer your question, uh, he's um, uh, Sirik obviously look has a, a sour, disappointed look on his face uh, to see that uh, uh, the light of man is cowardice, you know, here in, the, in at the borders of the world. Oh, he... Um, Better to live to fight another day. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been a few miles. So basically, I'm going to say to backtrack, it takes about two thirds of the day, and you make it back to the edge of the woods. So you're safe, at least from the goblins for now. Yeah. Uh, you could try to attack them. You could try to move back into the same position, um, uh, or you could depart. Uh, you don't see anything from where you are off to the east. These are grasslands uh, or that hillside to the north or to the west. But the forest, obviously, you can't see what's what's there. But that that's the direction of the goblins. Remember that we need to find out about uh, any other groups of humanoids or anything that we might be able to yeah. uh, do. So maybe we we use the grasslands to travel so we would see if they they're not going to surprise us. Right. Uh, and then we duck into the woods not to re-engage with them, but, you know, way further south of that road and maybe go into the middle of the woods and, like, uh, like maybe over here or something like that. Sure. Well, I can't do this. Yeah, we I don't should know how to do Sure, why not? How do people make the, the dots and stuff like that? You have like to have this? your select mode uh, at the top left. You have to have the cursor, and then you hold down the left mouse button, and it'll ping. Ah, there it is. Okay, so you're... Okay, maybe we enter the road. I'm not saying we do this. I'm saying maybe we enter the road about there. In the wood, not the road. Yeah, like good. sounds okay. good. All right. Uh, it, the sun is beginning to set, so um, you'll make it probably out to the road or so. You'll make it to the road uh, by the time darkness falls. How much would it... Uh... How much of a distance is it between the road and the edge? Not to go to the woods, but how much of a distance is it between the road to get a sense of scale? Road and the edge of the woods, going straight south. Um, and you can this 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 is actually accurate, by the way. The so yeah, I just don't know how to do the clicky buttons. So from where you are, uh, just south of you, it's a couple of miles to get to the main road, or it's you know it it also borders the wood. Um, which is about like so. A mile south. So if it's about 1.7 to like the road, maybe it's a maybe another half. I, I'm just thinking we should maybe travel maybe a, a half a mile further south than the road, so we're not like literally that close to the road. Sure. Okay. I think that maybe. sounds like a good idea. Well, you know, travel in the dark, but you know, maybe yeah. about a half a mile south. Right. So we're not right yeah. on the road. Yep. Right there. Yep. So you want to camp on the edge of the forest? Not literally on the edge of the forest. I was saying just a half a mile away from the road. He had us like in the middle of the road up there. I was just saying move a half a mile diagonally off right. the road. Let's not use a fire tonight then. It's warm out. So let's oh, just keep it. Yeah. 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 But, man. Hold rations. Yeah. yeah. I guess uh, I'm erasing rations. I don't know what you guys, but like, I guess every yeah. morning, every morning that we're out is a day's rations, I guess, eh? Yep. Yeah. I took care of one of yeah. my trail rations. Right, food. That thing I need to live and didn't write down on my character sheet. Oh yeah, I can uh, give you a ration. Uh, yeah, everybody should have marked off uh, a ration because you. Anybody who doesn't have it, let me know. I can give you a ration. Yeah, I, I don't have one. I thought I did, but I can't I forget, to... right? So, also, does everybody have a water skin? I forgot that. I, I have just... a water skin. Yeah, that I do. I... Have. Yeah. That is on the list of things I forgot to purchase. I bought okay. a lantern. I have you a don't have leather a water flask. Skin. I have a leather I flask that he, I can use for water and give to him to use. It's not as good, not as much, but... Okay. I'm, yeah, we're I'm sorry. What, what can I light. say? I, there's, there's so many things in, in the equipment list, and they all blur together. And there's... Okay, so... I, I should have grabbed uh, your advice and, like, used one of the, the packs. But now I have money to actually buy things, so... So, Alaric, you're that. giving him a flask... Uh, a leather flask. A leather flask. Okay, so that's a water skin now. Um, yeah. But you'll need, to, you'll need to replace that with a water skin. At your, yeah, yeah. Your I, the leather skin. flask I'm assuming is is small. Like I, I, you know, whatever. I don't drink very much, so I don't know whatever these small pinty looking things look like. Right. I'm guessing. I figure it's used for things like potions and and things like that. Yeah. So what I do is basically, 
um, and I don't know, this might be wrong and I'll learn more later, but this is what I do. In a dungeon, um, if it has the like the rest procedure, I don't give you the benefits of a rest unless you have both food and water. However, in a, in a dungeon, you don't have to mark it off. Uh, but in a in wilderness and, and, and overland travel over a period of hours and miles, uh, you have to do it at least once per day. Or in a sanctuary, you have to, and you do have to mark it off. And then for water, you can assume it can always be refilled, unless you're like in a desert or an area where it's obviously not going to be possible to refill your water. Uh, had that happened in B4, it specifically says in the adventure, you cannot refill your water here. So if you don't have water, you know, you'll slowly die of thirst. Anyways, um, let's see. Alaric, roll a d6. Oh, really? You're going to put it on me again? You're the boss. <laughs> yeah! Watch, this is the opposite we want now, but, you know, six. Oh, I'm sorry, I forget you're not looking at it. Six. A six, okay. Um, okay. Um, as you're camping out, you've you've decided not to light a fire for the night. Alaric, you're middle watch in the middle of the night, and uh, you hear scuffling in the forest across from you. Okay, I immediately, while keeping an eye for the forest move slowly to try not to be too noticeable as I wake anybody who's sleeping by tapping them and going quiet and I point toward the forest. What is it? What, you, what did you hear? I'm hearing noises from the uh, forest edge. I think we should uh, prepare ourselves in a uh, defensive in case anybody's coming. When he yes, wakes sir. you and points it out, you can all hear it now. And you hear animal-like sounds loping and snorting and running towards you, and it's getting closer. Oh, if it's coming toward us, animal-like sounds, perhaps we should move. Oh, can we gather our stuff up? Do we have time to pick up our, gather up our stuff? Do we have time to put on our armor? That's a good question. Um, however, I'll, I'll just kind of condense it to this. Um, you can flee, if that's the goal. Um... But there is a chance that uh, I, I'll, I will just leave it to a simple chance that, that these things may follow and catch up to you because um, I, I, they would uh, actually. I mean, and if uh, if uh, if they don't, then you'll be fleeing through the night, you know, so uh, you'll either need to set up camp and sleep again and, uh, you know, where you'll need to take the penalty of not having gotten sleep for the night. We tell like how many maybe there are. Or... Uh, several. Ah. Perhaps we just form up and prepare to see what we got. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're in the dark. That. Under the circumstances, I would say this is an OSR stands for oh shit run situation. Yeah, well, we don't know what we're running from. Well, yeah, but we just got up. I mean, are we going to even have our armor on? I think. Uh, I don't think we do. When in doubt, like get get out. I think. Yeah. Like, if they're wolves. If Dude. there's four wolves, we're we're gonna be dead. Well, a few of us might be at least. Yeah, I, will, I was like, who's the slowest one? <laughs> I will say that I'll say you can get your armor on if that's like your only goal. Like if your goal is like get your equipment on now, you could do that. But if your goal is to hide, then you can't. And you can only do that. If your goal is to run, then you're not going to be able to get armor on. You're going to have to just run. Right. Um, okay, well, that's an important decision. What do you all think? What, what's the... I'm not the right person to ask. I have my armor on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have armor on too, so... But I, I mean, would if that's say, what we're doing. I, I hate the idea of running from something and giving it our back without even knowing what it is. Yeah. I'm if it's wolves, they can catch up to us, and they can also track us. Let's find out what it is, maybe. I mean, the driver I believe an informed I, run is better than an uninformed run. Did you say okay. Can you describe the region surrounding our camp again briefly? Like, is there a tree I might climb up? A rock I might hide behind? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, right now it's dark. But that's okay. You can assume that you can get your gear and you know where it is and you know where your fellows are. Uh, but it is pitch dark, and so somebody also, uh, people will have to light torches to be able to see. 
because uh, there's no fire. Um, well, the one fucking thing I remembered to put on my uh, equipment list is a hooded lantern. Yep, oh, I got a torch. I want as well a hooded lantern. Okay. But I'd rather use my torch right now. Uh, Dan, I think you're muted. Were you saying something? Oh, yeah, sorry. I said torch might be a better idea if it's animals. Okay, so is Maybe the plan so. to uh, stand your ground and get your armor on and light torches? Is, or is it... Uh, what, what's the plan for the group? What's the plan? It sounds like most of us want to do that, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's okay. do that. Uh, in addition, um, in case it's something un you know that might fall for, if you like, I've got a tent that I can throw on the ground and you can get underneath. See if you can hide under that. <laughs> Can I, um, so how many torches do I don't have any torches. So as we're lighting torches, I, what uh, I would, Flanagan would like to do is prioritize light and fire. So if we have them, if someone's got a light, a torch lit, I'm like, G give me the torches. Let's get these out. Let's get everyone grab a torch, grab a torch. Well, I, I toss a torch to anybody who wants one. I've got four torches, I think. Yeah, me too. Are we in dry grass? It's hot, right? Yes. Um... You're, yes, four torches. I mean, what's your intention? Is it, I don't think you could try to set like a area on a blaze or something really quickly or right. something. I think he's worried about it. Oh, yeah. I'm, no, I think you're fine. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so... And then I've got my torch up. I don't think I even have my armor on. Uh, and uh, I've got my, sh I've got my uh, sword in the other hand. Okay. Um... Oh my. Lions and taggers and bears? Um, the, the good news is ah. that uh, you are aware of them, and it will take them from where they are or where you are. It will take them uh, two turns to get to you. Well, we can sell their pelt. So I know I said, well, news. you can... There you uh, go. But the once bad you, news is they well, can probably catch up. Once you light your torches, you're aware of this now. Okay. Well... I mean, we, we, we've got to fight now, don't we? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, yep. I, I put the torch on the ground, so or stick it into the dirt, and I take out my bow, and I say, start firing. Start firing. Hi. I do that. Sounds like a great plan. I got some right. of All right. We'll Where am I sling? We, we will skip ahead, then, uh, to the important part, and I will bring them into range. And... Um, you, uh, let's see, Alaric, you can roll a d6 for, uh, wait, sorry, spells or retreats, and the plan is combat, no spells, yes, no retreats, plan is combat, alright, Alaric, roll a d6 for initiative, you have to be a 6. Yeah. No? Okay. No, 5, sorry, I keep forgetting, sorry. Oh, I'm so used sorry. to Fantasy Grounds, which it pops up and everybody sees it. Uh, they are going to move into range. Um, and uh, sleepily and wearily, Sirik is like, uh, for the light, and screams it out into the night air as it echoes across the hillsides. Now, what are we seeing? It looks like three wolves for sure. And what's the other thing? In the Larger dark, wolves? loping towards you are canine type like creatures, black canines uh, in your torchlight, and three gigantic canines that are probably three, oh. three times the size of the uh, the other ones. Um, Some of the drive out to the east the other day. And uh, let's see. This Flanagan is next to uh, who, who's next to me there, Matt? It looks like it's your character. Um, I forget your character's yes. name. Um, I just, like, I see them all coming and I say, um, I don't think these things will come after us if they take down a few. They're going to stay right, in here. Right. They'll probably run away. So if we leave, if, 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 there's, if there's some bodies, let's get the hell out of here. Yep. I think there are too many NPCs there. What's that? Yeah, we've got five NPCs. We should only be four. Okay, one of them hits. Thank you for letting me know that. I'll get rid of this one back here. I don't know how that keeps happening. But, um... One All of them right, vanishes in a puff of logic. 
Hmm. This is brutal. This is going to be very bad. Nice. And okay. if you have a torch, try waving it in their faces. Maybe we can get them to get scared, the little ones anyway. Connell takes one point of damage. I put my torch into the ground. I have a bow out, so that's not happening. And it's your all's turn. Oh, no. oh it's thing our, about bows, by the way. Uh, I see nothing in the rules anywhere that says that you can't use a bow in close range. There's nothing that says that in the rules. It doesn't be yep. but yeah. But if we use a bow to, like, say, to shoot one of the wolves in front of the... Hold on, how do I do this? What I, what I was going to say what? is, if you fire a bow in melee and there's allies nearby, it's random who it hits. It might hit an ally, it might hit an enemy. Okay, so it's not like if we rolled a hit and automatically it's the person, it's, they could still hit the other person? Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, it says it can. Uh, when well, firing I think, into melee, there's a chance that it can hit. Uh, let me try. You might be able to fire at them at least one of them that doesn't look like it's yet. Yeah, that's melee. true. I can shoot at that one. I'll shoot at that one. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, if uh, anybody is moving, you can move your token. The movement distance is accurate for dungeon distance for your movement speed. Uh, if you're firing a, 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 a ranged weapon, you can roll to hit and damage. If you're doing that and an ally is nearby the enemy, you need to let me know. But go ahead and do that now. Am um, I close enough to melee up when it's done? Yeah. Uh, I'm attacking this one right here. When you say that the movement's accurate to dungeon, what, what do you mean by that? So I could move nine feet or whatever, right? Yeah, so yeah. you're... Yeah. So you're... Um, uh, whatever you're... My movement's nine, I can move nine feet or whatever. Uh, if you, in combat, uh, you can do 30 feet if your base movement rate is nine. You can do 30 feet. Okay. Oh, that's a lot then, okay. Also, uh, opportunity attacks are a thing in this game. So if you're moving away from an enemy or past it, that's another thing to think about. Do we get those against them? Yes. If they move uh, oh. away from you or okay. across from you, yeah. Uh, I'm backing off, guys. Um, this is, uh, they're going to rip some of these guys apart, and then there's no use sitting here and fighting them and let them rip, rip us apart. Oh, look at so, Blaine. Sorry Peyton's to say. Getting it. out of their shield and. Blaine's back. Well, let's start with the uh, top of the round with the group. Uh, what is the plan, Alaric? I am going to engage this thing in front of me and see what happens. Well, what's the, what's the plan for the oh, group? Plan. What is the group doing? What is the group doing? What are we? We have some people that are moving out. That only works if some people yeah, remain. I'm gonna shoot gonna and then run. I guess I'll shoot and then run since everyone else is running. So the plan I is was to fight. engage. Okay, uh, if the plan is to fight, um, uh, okay. Combination. Um, okay, that's fine. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, has everybody already attacked, uh, like if you're doing a missile attack? Yes, I did. I think I'm the only one. Who who were you targeting? Uh, this one here. Okay. Um, and, w and you rolled a 19? Yes. Damn. And how much damage? Uh, four. Okay, four damage. All right. And that was one hit, one miss? Yes. Okay. Oh, my. Okay. Okay. Um, a uh, an arrow flies into the the creature. It barely seems to harm it. Oh yeah, we're on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Time to go. Run away! Run away! Trying to run. So okay. Movement. Flanagan goes up to thirty feet, which is about here, and has his uh, bow out. I think it's, no, we can't do both. Okay, yeah, I've got the rod. Is the plan so? Is you actually can swing and then run because you're oh. right there already. Yeah, I'll do that. So. You can move and then swing. You can't swing and then run. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just run. So the plan is to run. Let me make sure I understand. Is that the plan? Sure. Okay. I, I'm so, moving at twelve. Let's try to run. So who is anybody have a base movement rate of six? Um, 
Is there, nope. So everybody's base movement rate is 9. Or, yes, or nine 12. 12, actually. No. Uh, AC's 12. Yeah, two 12s. Depending if I, like, I, Flanagan doesn't have his armor on, I've said that. Um, and so he's carrying it right now. And it's, uh, if, if he's slow, he's just going to toss the armor. Like, he's going to throw it on the ground and run. He Mine says to... base movement four. Four? Yeah, move square to four. Okay. I don't know how I, I, know how I, I think, got that, I but... Think that makes it a lot, right? Because uh, four is zero to 75 pounds on the feet. I'm only carrying 43 pounds. No, oh. your your base movement is 12, so... Uh, yeah, I think you're doing... Uh, yeah, four is in four, uh, 40 feet in combat. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what you think. So, so I'm good, though. no one's base movement rate is less than nine, right? I'm just trying to make sure I understand that. That's what I need to know. I believe so. Okay. All right. Then the following things happen. You flee into the night in the wilderness. This is an ignominious uh, an, an end to this. Because yes. these other people do not have that benefit. Oh, uh, I'll them. They Shall are, we? are in the heavy armor. The slower people are left behind for the fodder. Can we listen to Ross for a sec, just so I can hear what he's going to say? Uh, and uh, in the rest of you flee into the dark, hearing uh, the sounds of rending back behind you. Um, you become separated because it is dark. Mm. And um, you spend some time in the forest, um, exhausted, coming out in the daytime, hoping to regroup back in the grasslands. And uh, that is when you find yourselves thoroughly exhausted and out of resources. And so you, uh, you make the, uh, the day track at a forced march back to Zelkor's Ferry Oof. with uh, three less of your companions. And as far who as you is know, with us? Uh, who is with us? Caller? Can you guess? <laughs> I, know, I don't remember which one of the uh, names the, was. The guy with the dagger. Yeah, Con yeah the dagger, but I don't remember if it was Quill or Connor. Yeah, Connell, yeah. Connell, thank you. Um, That's the sneaky one? Yep. You are uh, beaten up and uh, exhausted and hungry. And um, one of you trying to subsist off of a flask worth of water as you run for miles away from these beasts. Um and you make it back to uh, to the tavern late that night on the uh, what would be now by now the twenty eighth of Adventure Tide on Frigg's Day. Um, so, July. what kind of wolves are in this forest? Uh, works. <laughs> uh, and that's where we'll we'll.